All right. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, just past nine o'clock. Uh, first off, hope you all, everybody had a good holiday. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a uh, new emergency purchase statement was added to the CPO GS site. Um, we do have a couple more uh, bid by monthly training. New dates were added for January 16th and one and January 29th. Um, those are there are still some spots available. So if you are interested in uh, joining us for that bid by training, uh, you can always email cpogs.training at illinois.gov. Also, um, we've had some requests to do an overview of IPG, um, what it is, and kind of do a, a, a high level overview of what IPG is, how it's used, um, and as well as the print to PDF function, um, because with bid by being the procurement file, those documents need to be pulled into bid by that are on IPG. So it's a very easy function and I'm gonna run through that process as well. So first off, there's a new updated emergency purchase statement version 20.1, 20, 20 excuse me. Um, it's on the CPOGS website under the solicitation and contract template. So it's with all of those, you know, if you're gonna go out to do an IFB, RFP, except, Etc. It's under all those templates, um, forms A, forms B. Here's just a screenshot of what that is. Um, as you can see, it has the new version uh, 20.1 that's out there. So if you're going to do an emergency, as always, go out to the website, make sure you're using the most up-to-date version. So our monthly bid by training, um, we already have a couple we're doing four within January. Um, two of them are already full. Uh, we do have spots available for January 16th, as well as January 29th. Um, these will be, we will be training in version 15 in bid buy. So from here on out, all of our trainings are gonna be involving uh, version 15. Um, there are gonna be some more updated videos coming your way, most likely next week, um, as we get into the new year and start ramping up to go live in version 15, you're gonna see a lot more activity in terms of from the bid by team, as well as uh, myself and, and Derek Reeves, um, just making sure that we are answering all the questions. We're getting some new videos out there to you so you can see what version 15 looks like. Um, if you are interested and you didn't see the sneak peek a couple weeks ago, um, why don't I go back here real quick and just, as always, I know we always have some new people on, on um, these calls. And so I'd like to show you where some of those training center videos are. So if you go to the CPOGS website, down here on the left-hand side, there's a uh, training center link. If you click on the link, There you have all the videos, all the slides that I've done over the last couple months. Um, and one of these, going back down to version, let's see, the sneak peek. Okay, so December 10th, um, if you weren't on that call, you can go, I just did a, a just a, a quick sneak, sneak peek. Um, I didn't do much of a deep dive at all, but if you want to see what version, version 15 looks like, you can go and check out that video. Um, okay, so... our slides here. Um, if, if you are interested in uh, registering for that training, um, email cpogs.training at illinois.gov to register. We do have some spots still available. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the Illinois Procurement Gateway. So the IPG uh, is a vendor portal. So many times vendors can be um, confused about what IPG is versus bid buy. So um, in a nutshell, IPG is, is where a vendor can go and register to do business with the state and they can essentially kind of uh, mark off, check off boxes of things that they have to do to be uh, required to have a contract with the state. So for instance, um, ownership information, certifications, um, financial disclosures and conflicts of interest forms, um, board of elections registrations, has to be uh, documented here. Um, if you have more than 15 employees, your IDHR number is listed here. Essentially, it's all those things that have to be done um, to do business with the state, but it's done online and it is, you know, streamlines yes. vendors' efforts um, to participate in state procurement. Also, it's if you're if a vendor that's going to be in the small business set aside program, you have to be registered in IPG. So it is the official list of all vendors that are in the small business set aside program. Um, and really what it does is it really helps out 
streamlines everything from a vendor standpoint, right? Because if I'm a vendor and I am bidding on multiple opportunities with the state, if I am not in the only procurement gateway, I have to complete all those forms for every specific procurement, every single time. Um, you know, I'm completing the forms A, et cetera. So that's gonna take a lot of time, but if I am registered in IPG, I just fill out the forms B, which is only two pages, and it takes care of that. Um, it also makes things much easier from the state side as well, because um, you, you, there's less paperwork. Um, there's a IPG, the team here at the CPOGS that vets these vendors. So they're catching a lot of those um, mistakes and you know missing information on the front end. So by the time it gets to you and your procurement, um, all of that should be corrected. So let's go out to, I'm gonna go out to the IPG and uh, do a quick overview of what that is. And if there, certainly if there's ever any more uh, specific training needed on IPG, Definitely take care of that. So the website is ipg.vendorreg.com. Here's what the home screen looks like. Um, you don't need to be logged in. For instance, if, if a vendor calls you and says, you know what, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm registered in IPG. You don't even need to be logged in and have credentials to do that. This is the outward facing um, side of IPG. You can always go to the IPG registered vendor directory. You can look up vendors that way as well, by any one of these parameters. Look up for, you know, say for instance, you know, something that we see quite a bit is, um, I'm not sure if there's any small businesses. So we're doing a small purchase. Hey, are there any any vendors that are registered in the small uh, business program with that NIGP code? You can easily select that here by looking up for, you know, looking up your NIGP code and browse, add your codes here. You want to add that code. So I'm adding those codes and then let's say a small business. So in our, in our example there, I'm looking up for small businesses that are registered underneath that one. And I found 26. So that without even being logged in, you can utilize that functionality there. Okay, so why don't I get logged in and walk through a little bit of what the IPG does and it'll make a little bit more sense. my home screen here. I'm going to go in and search for one of our, uh, our dummy vendor here. So in this instance, I'm going to be looking to go and um, let's say the word, you know, let's give a real life example. So a small purchase, um, they submitted their forms B, um, and you need to go in and put their IPG information into the bid by procurement file. So here's our Joe's car wash here. Now this is gonna function a little bit different than um, some of our other vendors because this is kind of our, our, our test dummy vendor here. So I'm gonna go to their registrations. You're gonna see tons of registrations here in this instance. Normally you won't see that. You'll see probably one per year because it is a yearly, um, a yearly registration. So every year, um, the vendors are, they have to renew and the system automatically sends out emails to them. Uh, I believe it's 60 days, 45 days and 30 days um, prior to their expiration. So they are automatically being um, notified, hey, your IPG registration is gonna be expiring on this date. So, but for our, for our example today, I wanna go in and I wanna, I need to grab all this, all their documentation and so I can save it and put it into bid buy. Um, I'm going to go and look at one of these older ones here. So briefly, this has some, you know, their general information. Are they registered as a, are they in the small business set aside program? No, they're not. They're registering as a prime contractor. Here's some general information here. As I scroll down, now this is where we're going to get into all the forms. So 
as a vendor, when they come in here, they are filling out each one of these forms, saving and continuing and putting in any the documentation that they need to. So um, for our purposes here, I, I'm going to open it up and just kind of show you um, just so you can see all of this. But for the most part, what you're going to end up doing is just um, printing to PDF and pulling the documents over. But just for our for our overview sake here, I want to show you guys what's what's in here. So this form C, are they registered? Would they like to register? They selected no. Um, for the Department of Human Rights and authorized to do business with the state. Um, they have their, you know, the highest number of employees. They have their uh, IDHR status, their number here. Um, yes, they're saying they're registered in good standing with the Secretary of State. Now, the Secretary of State, there is a chance that, you know, when the, they are, from a vendor standpoint, yes, they are registered and they are in good standing with the state. From that time that they are uh, submitting their bid, for instance, versus, you know, it could be six months later when they are receiving an award, maybe something has happened in between. Um, so that's why SPOs will go in and, and check with the Secretary of State system to make sure that they're still in good standing. Um, so our certification. So a lot of these questions will look very familiar. So if you're looking at Forms A, um, that 24 page document that they have to fill out, all their certifications, et cetera, these are the exact same questions. So a vendor has to go in and they need to answer all these questions um, that they are, for instance, they certify it's reviewed, complied with all the employment security laws, you know, all these different certifications that have to be there uh, in order to do business with the state as well as in section G here, it's their Board of Elections certification number. So in order to be in the IPG, you have to have a Board of Elections number. Um, so the way that we are viewing this is in order to be in IPG, we have to have the most restrictive um, restrictions here. So that if they have their Forms B and they're accepted in IPG, they are, are good to go. There could be instances where, well, I, you know, I, they, I technically, I'm just doing these, um, I don't need to do a Board of Elections certification, but in order to be an IPG, technically they do have to have one. So uh, that's the, and then as well, the next one is the Section H, which is the Iran disclosure. Um, and then we get to the financial disclosure conflicts of interest. You have all your um, parent forms, your ownership information, um, all of these the other questions that are on your conflicts of interest form. Okay, so that, that really mirrors the forms A. And really what this does is it just makes sure that when they are active and accepted in IPG, they are have checked off all their boxes to do um, business with the state. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back. I know that was a really quick overview of what those forms are. And if you have any other questions, reach out to me and um, or your SPO and they, and they can answer those questions as well. Um, but from a process standpoint, what you're going to need to do is, hey, they submitted Forms B and bid by. Now you have to go out and get their IPG information um, as well as their ownership information and save it and bring it into bid by. Um, so that's on your on all your job aids as well. If it's if they submitted Forms B, it'll say, you know, IPG information, including all information or all ownership information. So if you look up on the top right hand side here, you have two little new icons. Um, it says one says view all forms in PDF. One is download documents. So there's two ways that you can get all your documents there. Um, one way is you view all forms in PDF. I click that. It's going to bring up all those different forms that I just walked through. You know, a section A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I in one long PDF. Here's all of those, all that IPG information is all here in one PDF. So easy enough, you can go and download that vendor registration information. You know, go in and, and save it to, um, or save it to a folder and upload it in BidBuy. Now, I will say this, if you notice, this is just the forms, so there are no attachments there. So what I would need to do is, so a, a good example is um, in my, here we go. So the financial disclosures, conflicts of interest. There are parent forms here that need to be attached, but this is just a PDF. 
So I need to go back in and grab the parent disclosures as well as the ownership information. So what I would need to do is once I had had those forms all in the PDF, right, I go back into the section I, and then I'm actually going to open up each one of these documents and then save it. So that way all of our documents are there. It's just that that PDF function doesn't bring in all the attachments. So that's something just to keep in mind. So now I have my ownership information here. You know, I can open this up, save it, and then that needs to be a part of my procurement function. Okay, so that's one way to do it, is the printing the PDF. I don't need to wait for that ownership thing to come up. So it's that view all forms in PDF. Now the other is download documents. If I select download documents, it's going to bring up a, it's going to create a zip file. So at that point, that brings in all of the attachments as well. And so for some reason, there, with us being a, um, kind of a dummy vendor account, I'm getting this error. They can't find this file there. Um, maybe it was set up and then it was not um, attached correctly or something like that. Um, but it creates a zip file. You go in and then unzip it, save it to your computer, and then upload it into BidBuy. So there's two different ways to do that. I, you know, I'm not sure what is easier for you what works better for your workflow, but there are two different ways to uh, get all that information. Um, the big takeaway is that IPG information does need to be in the procurement file. So there will be this step here where you have to go out and grab this information and, and upload it into BidBuy because it's the procurement file. Okay, um, any questions on that? Um, like I said, if you have any other specific questions or you want to see me do that again, this is being recorded. It'll be out on the, um, the training center videos as well. Um, so you can see me walk through it again, or you can reach out to me and uh, we can do a little bit more training on, uh, on, on getting that done. I know it, it can be slightly different depending on what route you take in terms of using the PDF versus that download documents and the zip file. Okay, so that's the IPG. Um, our fun fact. The first word most people say every year is happy. Aha, uh -huh, sorry. Kind of a bad joke, right? Everybody normally says happy, or, uh, <laughs> happy new year. So the first word, and you can, you know, you can impress all your friends with this fun fact this evening, is I bet the first word most people say it every year is happy. Also, for our Harry Potter fans, um, it is that's Voldemort's that's fictional that's birthday. That's birthday. So December 31st, 1926. Yeah. Uh, Voldemort's birthday. This is one of our fun facts. All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much. I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful new year, and uh, we'll see you uh, next Tuesday. Thank you.